Where's that stick? outdoors at least once a day mostly twice a day but let me tell you the outdoors is far bigger than we even know let me explain well this channel is largely about the outdoors and you can't get much more outdoors than space uh, so over the Christmas period, prompted by a chap at work, a good friend who got himself a telescope and the launch of the James Webb Space Telescope, I've been in the attic and I've found as many pieces as I can to my uh, telescope, which has been in the attic for 20 years and I'm trying to get it operational. We're not there yet. Uh, a number of issues, there's a few things missing. Um, I've had to botch the counterweight uh, because I can't find the actual counterweight. There's a few covers for the mortars, uh, two covers in fact, and they won't go on because the plastics, I don't know, plastic goes brittle, whatever it does over time, but the little lugs that hold it on have cracked off. Uh, but what I've got here is an uh, uh, a, a, a relatively small three inch refracting that's a lenses type telescope on an equatorial mount so this equatorial mount can be driven with it's got two motors on it and with a controller here and I've got this controller, it's got this big lead coming off it which splits into three. I don't know whether you can see that there. So one goes off to power and I've got a 12 volt, a knackered 12 volt battery in here. Uh, but I've got it on a charger so it's just keeping the voltage at uh, 12, just over 12 volts. If, if I take the charger off the voltage just drops down to 10 because the battery is no good. So that plugs into the, that powers the controller, and then the controller has two more leads coming out, one feeding each each uh, little motor on the telescope. And because this is an equatorial mount, what it means is if I, I set it up correctly, basically pointing north and pointing up to Polaris, the star the star which is almost almost due north and you'll see it if you live in the northern hemisphere if you live in the southern hemisphere there is a very very faint star but you've basically got to find south from the um, the, the, the pointers the southern cross and the pointers but anyway we're lucky in the north we've got the north star so I've got a little telescope inside there to help me line this thing up and then if I switch this on it's initialising. Uh, 1996 is the software in this. 1996. So it's not doing anything at the moment. It's asking me to set the telescope up in a certain orientation to start off with. But obviously we can't do that in the daylight. So we're just going to press uh, press escape. And what it's done now, I don't know whether you can hear a little ticking in the background but it started one of the motors turning and that's the motor that compensates for the earth rotation so on a night when I point this towards a star 
the telescope compensates for the Earth's rotation and that star stays in the field of view. Uh, not only that, but with this computer here, it, if you program in the time and your location and you tell it where it's, you go, you go through a little routine to tell it where it's pointing and then it can go and point at anything else you want it to point to such as distant galaxies or uh, double stars or what have you so it's very good like that now in its day this was a very good telescope very expensive telescope uh, well for me anyway for me it was expensive uh, things have moved on a little bit and you'd get something quite a bit better for the same amount of money probably. Now this is only a three inch refractor which is a lens, fancy name for a lens telescope on here. Uh, so it's not a big telescope at all but what I used it for was mounting a camera on and then I would use the telescope to um, keep an eye on a star and make sure the motors were tracking correctly and making very very fine adjustments and so the camera lens on the camera stayed pointing at what I wanted it to stay pointing to and I would do exposures for half an hour or an hour uh, and so I could I could pick out some very faint objects by doing that and I used to do some work on variable stars so anyway it's not working at the moment because I haven't found the counterweight so I've boshed the counterweight at the moment. I, I mean I can use it like this but I can't put much weight on because I haven't got the proper big counterweight. Uh, and this in fact is uh, on the end here is just a bracket to put a camera on. Uh, when I've got it operational I'll mount the camera on the telescope itself. Uh, I've got a few books to help me look around the night sky but I haven't looked at the night sky for quite a bit so I've got myself a little program here called Stellarium uh, which will help me find things in the night sky um, it's just basically a map of the night sky and if I calibrate it when I move it around it will actually tell me what's in the direction I'm pointing this at and I've got some old books as well I can use so uh, there's another problem I've got in that there's an internal battery in this, this hand controller and it only lasts about 10 or 15 years. It's a lithium battery, a 3.6 volt lithium battery inside here. It's gone flat so this thing doesn't retain any information anymore once you've switched it off so you have to reprogram it every time you switch it on so I need to replace that battery and it's about the same size as a double A battery but it's not one and a half volts it's a lithium 3.6 volt battery so I've got to get one of those and uh, hopefully I'll be able to uh, uh, use the soldering iron and, uh, and get that sorted out uh, so I need to sort that out also as well when you're messing about on a night you need some illumination uh, and so I've got uh, the torch I used to use which I had modified and put red LEDs in and I put rechargeable batteries in the back but they've all gone um, very very crusty so they need pulling out and replacing so I'll have to sort that out and I need to sort out a better power supply because I've got to run the battery charger with this power supply it's not, not running properly so that's what I've been doing um, and it is the outdoors and I'm going to get the thing operational and I'm just going to look at a few objects and I'm going to put my DSLR camera on here which isn't the best camera for taking pictures of the night sky because the DSLR camera has it'll have a near infrared filter uh, in front of the sensor uh, so you won't pick up the hydrogen clouds and, and, and that so much but uh, at the moment that's what I've got if you can hear a bit of a whining in the background, it's the wind outside, and it's blowing through the uh, through the through the window. So that's what I've been up to, and uh, uh, 
it is outdoors isn't it it's outdoors it's the great outdoors the great great outdoors above our heads uh, so I'm just going to do a little bit of exploring when I get this thing sorted out and we get a clear night in the UK because we don't get many of them so so I just wanted to share that with you and wish you all a happy new year right I'll catch you on the next one <laughs>